Stand by guys, we'll be with you in just a few seconds. Danny's still setting up things behind the scenes. Um, yeah, it's, it's sometimes Facebook and YouTube don't talk to each other. We're trying to go live on both pages. So thank you. Thank you for your patience. And five, four, three, two, one. Hi, <laughs> and welcome to this week's show. Um, so, and thank you for your patience. Sorry we were running late today. So first of all, um, if I would like to wish everyone a happy Diwali if you celebrate it. It's the Indian Festival of Lights, which is the biggest celebration of the year for Indian people and in India. So if you celebrate it, I just want to wish you all a happy Diwali. And thank you everyone for your Diwali greetings to me. Yay! So today, uh, if you have any questions, I would love for you to submit them. But I also want to tell you that sometimes it's really hard to find the questions because they really skim by really fast. So Danny and I are both going to look for questions. And I have my iPad here so I can see if I can catch some and he can see if he catches them. But when you're actually doing a live, it's very hard to catch the questions as, they're, as they are skimming by. But what I do do is that I do check back later and many of your questions actually inspire me for future videos. So, but the, so please post them because they do inspire me, but please, please don't get offended if I don't spot them during this, this particular Facebook Live. So today, what I really wanted to talk about is self-love in relationships because one of the things that one of the questions that comes up uh, pretty often is people ask me or people write in and ask me the question that if I didn't love myself uh, at all or if I was so depleted and such a people pleaser and a doormat, how did I attract Danny? Which is a great question. I've answered it before, but I'm going to answer it again, but maybe in a slightly different way. Oh, and by the way, today I have a different unicorn mug. So just to show you my morning tea mug. Um, this one was gifted to me by my social media manager, Milena. Hi, Milena, if you're watching. Thank you for your mug. Um, so I'm going to try and use a different one every time and see how many mugs I have. And um, I actually have a lot of mugs, by the way, and cups and teacups. Um, so with, uh, oh, and by the way, uh, many of you have sent me amazing photos of your teacups and mugs, and they're so cute and beautiful. So back to how, um, how I attracted Danny. So during that time when I first met Danny, I was going through a bit of a rebellious stage. That was when I had run away from the marriage and I had decided and told my parents that I was not going to marry an Indian man because I didn't believe in the whole arranged marriage system and I didn't believe in the whole dowry system. And I was going through a very rebellious phase in my life and um, I was a huge fan of Cindy Lauper and I would dress like Cindy Lauper. And so um, because I was completely rejected and ostracized from my culture and my community for having run away from an arranged marriage, um, I started to work. I started to get involved in a career. And it was during that phase of my life that Danny met me and he loved that. So during the phase where I was ostracized by all the um, people in my community and my culture, when I was actually ostracized by all of them, that was when Danny met me and loved what he saw or what he met. So here's the interesting thing that happened though, because I had grown up in, uh, in a culture and I was conditioned as somebody who was conditioned to, uh, how should we say, to bend myself out of shape to fit in and to conform and to, um, and, and to serve the man that I marry and to serve the men in my culture. So when I, when I went through this whole arranged marriage thing, and by the way, even the arranged marriage um, breaking up from that, although a lot of people believe it took a lot of strength to do that, what happened is that I was engaged um, for a long period of time 
And I could have got out of it any time during that time. But the fact that I ran away at the last possible minute is also a very typical trait of a people pleaser. It's when you can't say no and you can't say no and you can't say no and you take things almost like you take them all the way to the end until you crumble. And that's when you say, I just can't do this. I can't do this. I'm crumbling. And you should have said no much, much earlier. You knew it was a no much, much earlier, but you don't have the courage to say no. And you say no when everything breaks down or when you break down. And then it's much worse at that stage because you're in so much deeper. So people who can't say no, people who are people pleasers tend to say no only after they've crumbled, only after it's really late. And so basically they're in a situation that's even worse than had they said no right in the beginning when they really felt, when their heart said, oh, I should be saying no now. And it's like, no, but how can I? I can't. I have to bend. I have to cave. So that's how it was for me. I literally ran away when it was like my own system, my own body was breaking down and I couldn't go through with it. I actually developed an ovarian cyst and I had physical symptoms and so it was a whole thing. Um, And so anyway, um, when I realized that I was rejected from the community, that brought out my rebellious side and I decided who wants them anyway. And it's almost like a self-protection. And so I'm sharing this because maybe some of you will relate to it and why I, how I attracted Danny. So Danny was actually attracted to that rebellious side, but I did not know that. And so after we got together and were dating, I then started to um, feel that, wow, he loves me so much, but I didn't feel worthy and deserving of that love. And so we, we did get married, but even during our marriage, It was almost like my lack of self-love was, um, you know, if you're in a relationship where you don't, you have one partner, whoever it is, one partner that doesn't love themselves and the other one that loves them tremendously, what happens is the one that doesn't love themselves feels that they are unworthy and undeserving of that love. So I felt I was unworthy and undeserving and I was constantly feeling burdened by it and obligated that I had to reciprocate all the time. I wasn't just being myself. I felt love was something I had to do. I had to keep repaying him. I didn't realize that all I had to do was love myself and fill my own cup. And that would would have been enough. And to just accept the love that he was giving. But instead, the love that he was giving me actually burdened me. And What happens sometimes when we're in that situation, (coughs) excuse me, I was in Omega teaching all week and it was an amazing retreat. But unfortunately, because the weather was so cold, I seem to have developed a bit of a sore throat. So what happens, unfortunately, sometimes when we're in a situation where our one partner, where our partner loves us so much and we have no self-love, we find it hard to receive. So what does lack of self-love do? It makes it very hard for you to receive because you don't think you're worthy and deserving of receiving. And when you are being, um, when you are being showered with love, you feel obligated, you feel burdened because you don't feel worthy of receiving that love. So that's what it started to do to me. I also felt that maybe that like I was an imposter, that I had to keep working on myself. So that was the other thing. I constantly felt I had to keep working on myself to do more and to be more. And when, when we were married, I wanted to fit into our cultural version of what a married couple should be. So I started to try to be this subservient housewife. But with Danny, that's not who he wanted. That's not who he married. He was so hilarious. Like even when, um, when I met him, just to share a funny story with you. So when I had run away from the arranged marriage, one of the rumors that went around our entire community was that I was spoiled. 
and that I, I was spoiled and I had expected too much. And, and the rumor was that the reason I didn't get married was because I didn't want to do housework, which was really funny because the way I had been feeling was that I was only wanted for to, to be, to do housework. And so anyway, so the rumor was that I was someone who was spoiled and could not and would not do housework. So interestingly, when Danny and I were dating, I was really worried that he'd heard all the rumors. What I didn't realize was that he loved me more because of what he was hearing about me. So one day I said to him, have you heard all those rumors about me that, you know, that happened after I ran away from the other marriage? And he goes, yeah, absolutely. Um, that's why I love you more. And you don't have to worry because I cook, I clean, I do laundry, I do windows. And I started laughing and I thought, oh my God, he is really cool. He's really okay. He doesn't have all these gender roles all, all, all aligned in his mind. So that's when I knew he was really cool. But the thing is, once we were married, I wanted to fit back into our cultural mold of what a married couple looks like. So when we were around people, and he was being his usual self. You know, he loves to be in the kitchen and he loves to do stuff with me. Like if we were entertaining at home, I would always shoo him out and say, no, because I was embarrassed to let people in my culture see that I wasn't the one doing all the housework. I was embarrassed to let them see that. And he didn't like that side of me so much. He said, what is wrong? Just be yourself. Why can't you accept that this is how we are? This is the way we do love. This is the way we couple. So, um, so there were many instances where it was almost like I was pushing him away. But when I was pushing him away, it was me not being myself. It was me not being myself. Where I feel really blessed was that he saw through that. And he saw who my soul really was. My soul is someone who is a bit of a rebel, who is a bit of a, um, an activist, who is somebody that is a bit of a disruptor in the world. That is who my soul is. So I was so blessed that he saw through my soul. Um, so that may be the case for me, but I can see how had I, had I not met Danny, it would have been very, very easy to attract and be married to the wrong person. I mean, I almost did. I have had my fair share of the wrong kind of relationships in my life. And so when I had the near-death experience and that freed me to completely be myself, my disruptor self, my rebellious self, and it freed me to share my voice, that was the person that Danny had fallen in love with. He was already in love with that person. That's why he was able and has been able to support me through this journey. Now, had I married someone who loved the person I was trying to be and mold myself into being, then it wouldn't have worked after the NDE. Either I would have had to continue to suppress myself, in which case I would have been the person I used to be, in which, pay, in which case I would have got cancer again and I would have ended up dying. That was the old me had I been trying to squash myself back into that box. And so this is why it's so important for you to be yourself when you are in relationships. It really is really important because it's important for the person you attract and the person who loves you to love you for the real you and the whole you. It's important for them to love you for your soul, not for who you represent in this world or not for, not for how much money you have or don't have or what you look like or don't look like or what gender you are or aren't or what your sexual preferences are or aren't. You, it's really important you don't hide any of those things and you allow the person and you allow the world to see you for who you are so that they can recognize and see your soul. You have to be yourself unashamedly and let people see your soul. I was just very lucky that there was a window of time when my soul shone through and it wasn't a very large window. And that was the window of time that it was orchestrated by the universe that Danny would come into my life. And I didn't recognize it at first. 
So the thing is, <clears throat> there is, I believe there's someone for everybody. And I believe that we just kind of have to be aware and we have to, and I didn't recognize that Danny was my soulmate the first time he met me. Because even in my own mind, I was thinking of, of something completely different. He was somebody that was kind of introverted, but very quiet, very much in the background. And I, and so it was really, really interesting how we came together and how it just gelled. But what's interesting is after I got the cancer, after, and then it continued until the NDE and after the NDE, the love has grown even more and more and more. Um, for many people, what we look for is more like infatuation and we feel that infatuation first and then it fades and for a lot of people there's nothing there after that what i encourage you to do is look for soul relationships and the way to look for a soul relationship is to start by loving yourself start by loving your own soul when you love your own soul that's when you are able to see through to other people's souls the way you love your own soul is by actually, um, I encourage people to hug themselves and then just think of yourself as a soul, not as your physical body, but as a soul who has come into this world. Your soul is so much greater and so much bigger than your physical body and your physical life. It has come to this life. It has come to your parents. You were born through your parents for a reason. You chose this life for a reason. You've gone through so much challenge and trial and tribulation and hurdles and obstacles to get to where you are now. I want you to feel that, feel your soul having gone through all of that. Your soul needs your love and your compassion. It really does. It just needs your love and your compassion. And you need to allow that soul to express what it came here to express. And when you do that, that's when you attract the right kind of person, someone who sees you as a soul and not as a role. So, <clears throat> when, so when I was at that state, when I was really vulnerable. When you are your soul, you are, you allow yourself to be really vulnerable. I was vulnerable because I was ostracized by my community. Um, I felt lonely. I felt rebellious. I felt angry as well. That was when, that was the phase of my life when, when I met Danny. Um, but when you are somebody who is, um, who does not love themselves and you are trying to seek approval, that is the time when you are most likely to attract the wrong kind of attention. When you really, really need approval from other people from the outside world and you feel empty inside and you don't love yourself and you don't appreciate your soul for the journey it's come come through, it makes you the most vulnerable to people who can actually, um, who can actually take advantage of you. You can fall for scammers. I, I have fallen for people in the past, way back when I needed approval, for people who just said all the right things, did all the right things, but just wanted something from me. And in one case, it was a guy who just wanted money. I mean, I'm not saying I was super wealthy, but he just wanted my money and whatever I had in my bank account. He was constantly saying that, um, that when he, uh, that he will take care of me, this is only a temporary situation. It's really temporary. And that he will, um, once he gets the money, he will shower me and, and tenfold for everything that I'm doing for him. And he would buy me flowers and he would do all this kind of stuff. But he was constantly asking me to transfer tons of money into his bank account. And because I was so addicted to his approval and to his, the, the love and the attention he was showering me, I continued to do that. Now, when you love yourself, and when you love your soul and when you honor your soul, your soul will see all the alarm bells in that because he was a total scammer. Because what actually tipped me off was that I started hearing from other people that he was doing the same with them. And so this happened to me when I was in my 20s. Um, and so this kind of thing, 
I don't want to um, blame the victim. These kind of people need to be stopped and they need to go to jail and they need to be exposed and they need to be shamed and all of that stuff. Absolutely. But I also want to tell you that when you love yourself and when you love yourself, what happens is when you love your soul, you start to you start to operate at a higher frequency. You realize that your soul is valuable and that your soul is here to share its light and to share its message. And you stop bending yourself out of shape for to get the approval of other people. You stop being so accommodating to the point that it's detrimental to you. That's what happens. And you start seeing people as souls as well. And you start seeing and you start attracting people who are a match for you. So the shortcut, the really shortcut is to be aware that we are actually energetic beings. What is a soul? A soul is an energy being. You are that primarily. You are that more than you are a physical being. So if you focus on your soul and your energetic being, the more that you love and appreciate your soul and the journey that you've been on, the more you are expanding your energy. The more you focus on expanding your energy, the more that you will attract people of that same energy. So you will actually be operating on a higher frequency and people who match that frequency are the ones you will attract. When you don't love yourself and when you're constantly judging yourself and you're judging your soul and you're beating yourself up and you're seeking approval and you're doing things, you're being a doormat just because you want everybody's approval, your energy shrinks right down. And when your energy shrinks right down, you attract people of the same energy, of the same frequency, who are only there to actually perhaps to take advantage of you or who are also depleted so they need energy from other people. So the only thing you have to do is to increase your energy. The other thing I want to say is that if you are an empath and if you are highly sensitive, you are the most vulnerable to um, giving your energy away to other people and depleting yourself and then bending yourself out of shape for other people. And the reason is because empaths and highly sensitive people are other people focused. It's very difficult for empaths to focus on themselves and to focus on loving themselves. Um, they feel uncomfortable. It's very difficult for empaths and highly sensitive people to receive. They feel uncomfortable receiving. They love giving. They just love giving. They love doing for other people to the point where they forget about themselves and then they deplete their energy and then it becomes detrimental them, to themselves. And when they deplete their energy, that's when they become vulnerable to people who come and swoop in and give them the wrong kind of love. And, and, and also, there are people who are very other focused, which is usually empaths and highly sensitive people. Then there are healthy people, which is great, who are balanced, who feed themselves and they take care of other people which is great. And that's what you're striving to be really balanced. Then there are people on the other end of the spectrum who are very self-focused and the ones who are very self-focused are the ones who are looking for the ones who are highly other people focused. So this is why those who are other people focused have to balance and start focusing on self. Otherwise you may attract someone who is highly self-focused and who does not focus on other, who will want someone like you in their life so that you can be there purely to serve them. Those are the kinds of people I mostly attracted until I met Danny. The, that is why being engaged, uh, being in an arranged marriage depleted me um, because I had, I used to attract people that were purely self-focused because purely self-focused people are extremely attracted to people who are purely other focused and purely other focused people are ve very vulnerable to being attractive to those who are purely self-focused. I hope that made sense. And really, if you want to use different words, other focused are what I are empaths and highly sensitive people, self-focused are narcissists,
but most people are just regular balanced people who are in between. So now I'm going to look for some of your questions. And by the way, um, next week I won't be doing a Facebook Live, unfortunately, or the following week, but I will be speaking in Sedona next weekend. And if you're in Sedona, I'm doing a workshop on Monday, not, not tomorrow, Monday, but a week from now, Monday. I would love for you to join me. There's still some seats left at my one day workshop in Sedona on Monday. I'm going to include a link so that, so that you can check it out. Also, um, in May of, two, of 2020, that is six months away, in May of 2020, a couple of my friends, Emmanuel Dagger and Sunny Dawn Johnston, we've got together and we've created a beautiful, magical healing event in Sedona. It's a three-day retreat where we're going to cocoon you away for three days and it's going to be magic with meditation, with music, with healing, with teachings, um, just everything that we can think of put together to make it a beautiful, relaxing healing retreat in Sedona. That's in May and I'm going to include a link below. So do check that one out as well. Now I am going to check on your questions and comments and I'm going to turn to Danny to see if he's found any and I'm going to see if I can find any. So let's see because it's not the easiest thing to find comments and questions but I really appreciate you all tuning in thank you for tuning in um, Danny do you see boo do you see any questions because this thing doesn't scroll very easily I'm looking through here and uh, <clears throat> there is one thing that has to be addressed very very quickly yes somebody did point out uh, Christina Piero uh, says that she's looking. YouTube claims to have you live right now, but of course you're not live. So, yes, YouTube is having a little bit of a problem this morning, so it's not actually broadcasting us. Oh. So for anybody who is tuning in on uh, on YouTube, unfortunately this morning it didn't quite work. We do apologize, and I'm going to try and find a solution for two weeks from now when Anita's back doing her Facebook lives. Yes. Oh, oh, and the following week I'm in New Mexico. So I think the next two Sundays we're not live. So next week I'm in Sedona and the following week I'm in New Mexico for the Scientist Sages and Spirituality Conference with some wonderful friends of mine, Joe Dispenza, Bruce Grayson, Greg, uh, Bruce Lipton, not Bruce Grayson, Bruce Lipton and Greg Braden. Um, so, so that's going to be a lot of fun too. Now, for some reason on my iPad, it says comments are disabled. I have no idea why it's doing that. Ah, uh, it's because Facebook doesn't want you to see all of the comments that people are writing. Aha, I think I can see them now, I think. Well, I'll, I'll read the comments to you. Yes, like, please. I love you and Danny so much. Yay. Uh, another one says, uh, Thank you. Thank, uh, thank you, Anita, and Danny. Uh, there's another one that says, thank you, Anita. There's another one that says, love your message. Uh, there's another <laughs> one that says, thank you for sharing. Yes, 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 yes. Beautiful <laughs> story about you and Danny. Uh, I'm tearing up. <laughs> <laughs> so, see, it's time you have your own show. Absolutely. I think it's time. I think that's a message for you. Exactly. Time to have your own show. Exactly. In the meanwhile... Ladies and gentlemen, excuse me, while I cross the camera, and I will give you this iPad, which does have all of the comments. Oh, yay. So it's got the comments. Indeed it does. So maybe... Um, I'm going back. No, you can stay here. Well, look. You can say hello. The only uh, thing people can see of me is my index finger. Hello. <laughs> yes, they can, actually. You're yes. right. All right. I'm going to cross the camera again and go back to my little hovel behind the cameras. Oh, somebody's saying that my live video was um, disrupted due to some glitches. Okay, so if, uh, if it's disrupted, just go back and watch it again. It's going to be there, like, permanently. So uh, thank you for your comments. Oh, thank you. Your comments are so beautiful. Linda Fusco says, I'm so amazed at how parallel this is to my husband and I. Yay, yes. So we attract our true soulmate by being ourselves. Michelle Lerner Myers says that. Yes, you do. You attract your true soulmate by being yourselves. Um, thank you. Diana Wilde says, hi, Anita from the UK. 
you know, you know, I love hearing from where in the world you are. I love hearing that uh, you're from so many different countries. We do this now in the morning, trying to catch as many different time zones as we can. But um, I'm, I wish there was a way we could still catch Australia because and also Hong Kong. It's uh, really late at night in Hong Kong and super early in the morning for Australia. And um, let's see. Uh, oh, and when is the new book coming out? Joshua Carr asks, when is the new book coming? It's coming out next year. So the new book, I have titled it Sensitive is the New Strong. The publishers, I don't know if they like the title or not, but I'm going to wait and see. Uh, I like it because it's a call for sensitive people to step up because one of the things I believe is that the reason why there is so much um, stuff happening in the world that is not great, like the world is in such a mess right now, is because all the sensitive people are staying back because we feel sensitive and empaths, sensitive people and empaths are kind of feeling like, oh, I can't handle this, I can't handle this. And then we, we go stand in the wings. But we're, because we can't handle it, the people who are not sensitive, who are not empaths, the ones more at the other end of the scale, the, the ones more at the narcissistic end of the scale, are the ones who are stepping out and taking all the leadership roles. And one way that we can stop them is if we stepped out and showed people what it means to have a more sensitive world and a more sensitive planet. Because I still can't believe that we spend, that we are okay with spending tons of money on uh, on technology to kill each other, but we don't spend that amount of money to feed each other, to feed. There are still people in this world who are starving, um, who are hungry, and, who, and countries that are being exploited for the development of other countries. And those wealthy countries just spend on nuclear weapons to eradicate countries instead of helping. It's just how barbaric can we get? And we consider ourselves the most evolved species, I mean, we got to get real. So sensitives, empaths, step up, take leadership roles. That's what this book is about. Sensitive is the new strong. It's time the sensitive people took on the leadership roles and taught the world what it means to be, to run, run the world in a more civilized way. So let's see. Um, finally found you. Yay. Hello from NYC. So happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you. I'm looking for questions. Um, thank you for all your beautiful comments though. I love them. Uh, Joanne Cooper says lack of commitment from him after being with my partner for 13 years, separate houses, even though we have a lovely child. So the thing is when you have a conscious, um, relationship, it's, like if you grow apart, that could just be a part of life. Don't beat yourself up if you grow apart. Because when you, there's a way of doing conscious, uncou um, conscious uncoupling. And that's okay. That's a thing and that's okay. That happens. It doesn't have to be an ugly divorce. It can be conscious uncoupling because you've grown apart. And that's totally okay too. So we have a message from Richard, Richard Machin or Mashan. I hope I pronounce it correctly, Richard. I know who you are. You're one of my admins and I just love you. Love having you in my groups. Thank you, dear Anita. Since my darling Anne has passed over, her love for me and my love for her has saved me. Oh, that's so beautiful. What I wish to share is how our love is filling me and helping me, especially in my work as one of your admins, especially in From Healing to Whole. Um, yes, I know how much our union does not stop because Anne has passed over. So the thing is, what I think is beautiful about Richard's message is that he still, his love for her still carries him even after she has crossed over. It's still filling him and he still feels her around him. And that's what I think is so beautiful. Lyles has a question. Lyles Live asks, what to do with parents who don't, who do not really care about you. I want to stay in contact, but are not interested in the life they are living. No love, no support, only judgment, coldness, etc. It feels mostly self-servicing them, how to deal with them. Um, so my suggestion is to take care of yourself first. You have to, because otherwise you will be depleted by parents who don't really care about you. So really it is about 
loving yourself, taking care of yourself, finding things in your life that bring you joy, and then checking in on them once in a while when your cup is filled so that you are sharing with them from the overflow. Remember, you have to share with people from the overflow. Keep filling your cup, allow it to overflow, and share the overflow. Share the overflow. It won't make a dent in you. Um, so describe in more detail these self-focused people. Okay, that's from Madhu D. Self-focused people don't care about your well-being or your welfare. They, everything they do is driven. So even when they appear to love you, even when they do things like tell you, say the right things, they're doing it for a result. So in other words, their love is conditional. It is not unconditional. Someone that loves you unconditionally um, will see you go through your ups, your downs. They will embrace the whole you. They will embrace um, your darkest times. Now, this is not to be mistaken with people who have just have drifted apart and agree to set each other free. That is totally fine. That happens at different phases in life. But when you are somebody that is very other focused and you are with somebody who is very self focused, they will do the right things and say the right uh, and say the right things just enough to get you to keep doing for them. But it won't be something. So so here's how you can tell. You can tell because you are afraid of being yourself because you feel if I am myself, I am going to lose them. That's how you tell when you're with someone who is other focused. Ask yourself this question. Can I be myself with this person? If you cannot be yourself with this person, it means their love for you is conditional. If their love for you is unconditional, then you are, uh, and you are being yourself, one of two things will happen. Either they will, so either they will feel that the two of you are not a great match and they will set you, set you free, um, but they will set you free in a loving way. It will be a conscious uncoupling. If, however, they get, um, they feel entitled, they get angry and they feel, how could you change? And they manipulate you and they make you feel that you are selfish for being yourself it means they are self-focused. So the minute you feel that um, you cannot be yourself because you fear losing them if you are being yourself, and if you feel that when you are being yourself, they make you feel that you are being selfish just for being yourself, then it means they are self-focused. There is a difference between being selfish and self-care. When you are selfish, um, you are expecting the other person to serve you. When it is self-care, you are allowing that person to be themselves, but you just want to be yourself. If someone makes you feel selfish for being yourself, then, then they are actually wanting you to change uh, for them. But when you are being yourself, but you are not asking someone else to change, that is not selfish. So in other words, when you are not asking someone else to change, you're saying, I just want to be myself. That is not selfish. When you are asking someone to change for you, that is being selfish unless they want to do it voluntarily. I hope that kind of made sense and made it clear. I get so many questions about relationships that it's, it's, it's interesting. And really when you start to love yourself and you love your soul and when you feel into your soul and you start to learn what your soul came here to be and do, it starts to fall into place for you. You don't have to think it over in your head all the time. The more you love your soul, the more you uh, allow yourself to follow your passions, the more it starts to fall into place for you. So I'm going to say thank you. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm going to look back and read all your comments and I so appreciate your beautiful comments. And even if there were glitches, you can go back and watch it again. You can watch it 
over and over. It's going to be on Facebook. It's going to be on YouTube. It's going to be in my newsletter. For those of you that haven't signed up for my newsletter, please do because in my newsletter, I tell you where I'm going to be. And also, we're going to be launching a new platform in a few weeks. It'll be a membership platform and I'd love for you to be part of it where I will offer courses and live interaction videos where I can actually talk to you in real time and interact with you. So that's what I'm really excited about. So please sign up for my newsletter and you will be kept informed of when this is launched. Thank you so much for tuning in. And if you loved the videos, please continue to follow me. Love you all. And I will see you in a couple of weeks unless I make a spontaneous live appearance. Bye everyone and have a great week and happy Diwali to those who are celebrating.